Hello everyone, it's Wendy Burton here and I'm just going to give you some ideas, some of my thought bubbles around talking to patients around the COVID vaccine. So it is February 2021 and the vaccine rollout is going to commence sometime we think in the next month. And I think it's very important uh, that as general practitioners we are preparing to protect our population and having conversations, whether this is something that the patients raise with us or something that we raise with them. And I'm sure that you will find, as I am finding, that there are concerns out there, there are conspiracy theories, and just a whole lot of everything, and it's important that we address it. So my recommendation would be simply that if a concern is raised, that we acknowledge the concern. We don't bat it away, we're not disrespectful, we acknowledge that there is a concern. We then need to assess what's the information that the patient has heard so that we can assist them to process the information or the concern that they had. It may be, of course, that their concern is quite valid and we need to think that through and walk them through that. It may be um, that their concern is something that is, is a nonsense, but please don't be disrespectful. Um, I think it's important that we respond in a kind, orderly fashion and that we um, are hopefully able to reassure or perhaps redirect um, to resources that may give more depth of information than what we will have time for. So two concerns that are the principal concerns that I've been dealing with so far. One is around the whole microchip theory. Fortunately it hasn't come up often but it has come up. Come up. It has come up. So I'm very quick to reassure patients um, in that space. I thank them for raising the concern. I say that I've heard of that uh, as well. Uh, but there just it's not a plausible thing for us to be doing. There's no um, precedent in putting a microchip into vaccinations. It would take an enormous coordinated effort around the manufacturers worldwide. And just the practicalities of 10 microchips in a multi-dose vial having to be drawn up uh, through a needle into a syringe, how could we even be sure that there was a microchip in each dose and only one microchip in each dose? It really just doesn't gel and I'm quietly confident that the microchip story, while it's getting a lot of airtime on certain um, parts of the internet, um, it's just not a thing. The main concern though, that people raise is just that it's too soon, that the uh, testing regime has been rushed, that there's gaps in what we know about these new vaccines uh, and that they're just, they don't think there's enough research. So I acknowledge that up front and I say this has been, you know, an amazing effort uh, and it was one that uh, worldwide was wanted. So we wanted these vaccines developed quickly, but now that they have been developed quickly, we understandably have questions. For us here in Australia, one of the advantages for us not being overwhelmed with COVID cases is that we have the luxury of being able to look and see what is happening in other parts of our world. So because we haven't had to do an emergency authorization for these vaccines, our Therapeutic Goods Administration is taking its time looking at all the data to make sure that this is safe and that the vaccines are effective. By the time the rollout comes my way, and for most of us, it will not be the Pfizer vaccine that we receive. It is likely to be the AstraZeneca vaccine. So by the time that these vaccines are coming our way, not only will there be more published data from the original clinical trials, but we'll have real-time data. So as of the 6th of February, 2021, the John Hopkins University said that there's been more than 119 million doses of COVID-19 vaccinations given around the world. And those kind of large numbers help us see even small side effects. So I reassure patients that we're watching, we're looking at the data, where we will have more by the time that we need it, and that if concerns are raised, then we may have to halt the program, but to date it's looking really very, very safe. It is important um, that we do address these concerns though, being immunised ourselves against COVID helps to protect us. And we are using, in the case of AstraZeneca vaccine, we're using a known technology. So we've been using this kind of technology for vaccines for decades. So yes, we've tweaked it to be the COVID part um, that's included. There's no live component to the vaccines. You will not get COVID from this vaccine. 
and I will take my chances. Yes, I will have the vaccine. I will take my chances with an unknown side effect from a known vaccination progress process versus the known and unknown effects of COVID-19 infection. So in short, I'm sure you'll all have your own processes, things that you do, words that you use, how you say this, but please acknowledge the concerns, assess the concern, assist them to identify sources of information if you're unable to provide that for them. Be sure that you respond in a kind manner, don't be disrespectful, and hopefully you'll be able to reassure them about the concerns they have, and if not do, please redirect. Thank you.